Welcome to another teacher profile. Right now we have Victoria Stenkin from the North Sacramento School District and she is their Teacher of the Year for 2008. Uh, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, congratulations on being named a Teacher of the Year. Thank you. How does that feel? Well, it feels very, it feels good. Um, I feel like I share it with a lot of other people though because there's a lot of great teachers out there. Well, tell me about your school and uh, tell me about what you teach. Well, my school is in North Sacramento School District. It's uh, a, a K-6 uh, school, and um, it's very diverse. Um, we have a lot of people that stay in the community, have their children stay in the community, and then those kids stay also. So we, I get a lot of generations now coming in, which is a real joy. Uh, and um, our kids are a lower socioeconomic group, and a lot of working parents. A lot of parents that care a lot about their kids. And so we are changing now because of uh, people retiring, we're getting new blood in, and so um, it's an exciting time. And what was the name of your school again? Hazel Strau Elementary School. And how long have you been teaching there? It's been a while. I've been there 33 years, and uh, I've taught every grade but kindergarten there. So what is it like to be teaching in the same school for so long to see families coming back? It's great because you feel a real sense of uh, community, uh, you recognize people over the years. Um, they'll request that you have their child. You can bring in pictures of their parents when they were in your class, and it, it makes the field, kids feel safe and uh, continuity, so it's a good thing. Well, well, tell me what you enjoy the most about teaching. What's brought you back for 33 years? I love spending my time with kids. Um, I love trying to empower them and give them, them a sense of hope for the future no matter what conditions or situations they may be at present. And um, every day is different. There's a new possibility every day. And uh, you do really feel like, even though you only have them for a year, you can leave them with skills and thoughts that will follow them through the years of their life, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. What are some of the challenges that, that you face in your classroom? Or, or just tell me about some challenges that you think teachers in general are facing these days. Well, I think that um, one of them is the, uh, the standards are very important for us to be able to measure how kids are learning and if they're learning. Uh, I just, we are sometimes concerned that the pacing sometimes could lead to the child, the whole child being left behind in pursuit of the higher scores. So I think we need to meet a happy medium, find some way to meet a happy medium and still keep the um, expectations high. And the other thing is the achievement gap. Um, it's been there a long time and it's just coming out in the media more now. And our district has taken a step, quick step forward in training equity teams from each school to become familiar with uh, different ways of teaching and being coming aware of the differences and the fact that no matter what the socioeconomic group a child comes from, there still exists an achievement gap. So we need to find a way to change what we're doing, what the school looks like, how it works together with the students and the teachers, um, so that everyone is achieving and then we don't have that gap, so that uh, everybody's increasing, but the gap is getting smaller and smaller. What are some of the things that you've tried to do on your own to, to kind, of, kind of narrow that gap? Probably just my, uh, my approach to teaching is to develop, try to develop a lot of trust between the families and myself, really have high expectations no matter what the situation is, give kids tools that could help them transition from a difficult situation at home maybe to a more neutral setting at school so that they can kind of set those things aside while they're with me uh, and know that, that I know about them, but that together I could help empower them to overcome them and get skills that would help them uh, overcome and pursue better things. And, and when you do that, when you, when you find ways to close that gap, you must f see some great rewards. Tell me about some of the rewards that you've received uh, as a teacher. Well, there, most of my, my rewards, I feel, are on the personal level. I think because if I know I've touched a child on a personal level, then maybe the things that I have said along the lines of, of setting goals and, and believing in yourself, those will come too. Um, I've been honored many times by kids of different cultures 
that's a real important thing for me is to have my classroom be a, an inviting place and an accepting place of all cultures and religions and traditions and rituals. Uh, I've been gifted with uh, Muslim prayer rugs. I, I have kids uh, sharing their um, religion in the classroom and it's an open uh, time where the kids feel an equal chance to share what's important to them and that it's celebrated in the classroom, the diversity is celebrated. And it's a place where it doesn't have to um, be a separate thing from their, what they're doing in the classroom. They can bring it in and share it with their friends too. Well, how do you see uh, education changing in the future? How would you like to see it change? Well, of course, I'd like to see the achievement gap of children of color um, lessen or not being existent at all. And I wish I had another 20 years to be here to watch it. I think we're right on the edge of when it's going to start happening. Uh, this year I'll be getting some more training with the equity program with Glenn Singleton. He's out of the Bay Area and um, he's been training the teachers and principals in our district to go back, the equity teams to go back to their schools and train their teachers. This year we'll have the care teams which are going to be becoming more familiar with strategies in a multicultural perspective. So I'm excited about finding out what those are too and start using those. So I think that what will happen will be that what what's happening in the classroom and the schools is going to start looking different. And I think that's an exciting time. And, and with professional development being available now, uh, more of it, I guess, uh, that's got to be exciting too because of all the cultural changes we've had in the classrooms over the last decade even. Right. And I've always been very interested in becoming more familiar with what's going on. New things like strategic planning and being a mentor and being a bits of mentor with teaching standards and um, I like to stay uh, up with those kind of things because I think that makes me a better teacher and I can help new people coming in. Now is there anything special you might do in your classroom to kind of motivate or inspire your students, uh, especially those who sometimes might need an extra nudge? Well I have a real family and team building thing. We, I talk about the class being a, a family. They set monthly goals, we have monthly celebrations, uh, we celebrate each other's successes. So there's lots of support and study buddies that are working and when some, one of us succeeds we all feel happy. So I think that when the kids feel it's a nurturing place where people care if they succeed and not only a good job but the person that might have helped you might be one of your peers, they feel a good sense of uh, empowerment also. So it's, it's a double-edged good thing. <laughs> Was there uh, in your life uh one or two special teachers who kind of inspired you and made you think that you wanted to be a teacher? Actually, I, I decided to be a teacher when I was in kindergarten. My teacher was Miss Liddy Coat, and she was at Star King in San Juan School District. And um, I knew then that I wanted to be a teacher. And I just always, that was just an automatic thing through my whole childhood. I'm uh, so fortunate to have known so early. And um, That's early career planning. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I... Uh, don't regret a minute of it. Every day is a gift uh, of being allowed to have those children's futures in your hands and um, I never take it for granted or uh, never forget for a minute the, the, the power that I do have to help them be the best that they can be. Well what would you say to those folks out there who are considering teaching as a career and what would you say to kind of uh, as a sales pitch I guess to, to kind of say you really should strongly consider teaching? I try to encourage my own students to do this and um, I encourage, I tell the kids, uh, especially kids of color, but I tell it to all the children that we really need more uh, teachers of color. The teachers need to be reflective of the audience that they're working with, but uh, anybody can be a great teacher, so that shouldn't stop anyone, but I, I think that's, there's been some resistance sometimes of getting kids of color into teaching. I'm not sure why. I'm hoping that as those kids have more success and feel happier and more comfortable in the schools, maybe they will start becoming teachers. It's not the best paying job with money, but every day you feel like you've really done something good for the future, and every day is different. There's always the possibility for even a better day tomorrow. There's great moments. You just have to love children and be flexible. But I can't think of a better job because, like I said, lots of people go to work and they just dread going. I never do. And it's just, if you love children and you like to think on your toes and you like to try to inspire people, it's the best job. 
because uh, I just think kids are the best, best people to be spending your time with. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. We're speaking with uh, Victoria Stenkin, who is the Teacher of the Year 2008 for the North Sacramento School District. Thanks for joining. Thank you.